Hello Divi Nation and welcome. In today's video, we'll be creating an R process section with Divi's new column structures. This is the final result we're aiming to achieve. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. So let's start by creating a brand new page. So I'm going to come over here to pages, click on add new, and then we're going to name our page. And then I'm going to click on use the Divi Builder. And then I'm going to go straight to the Visual Builder. So here we have three options, but in this tutorial, we'll just be building this from scratch. So I'm going to select this and then I'm going to close this for now and add our background color to our section. So I'm going to come over here and click here on this gear icon, click on background, and then I'm going to click this plus button to add my background color. And this is where I'm going to add my color. Now, if you want to use the same colors as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the description below. Right, so now that we have our background color, let's go ahead and add some spacing. So I'm going to click here on design, spacing, and we're going to give this a padding of 170, both to the top and the bottom. And then I'm going to activate this chain so that the value is applied both to the top and the bottom. So in this tutorial, we are creating an, an alternative smaller screen size. So what we need to start by doing is by going to visibility and um, specifying where we want this to be viewed. So for this one here, we want this to be viewed on the desktop. So we're going to disable phone and tablet and then click save. Now the next stage here is to add our column structure. So I'm going to click this plus button and we are going to go with this column structure here. So I'm going to select it. Now the next stage is to add a gradient to column one, three and five. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm just going to close this for now. And then I'm going to click this gear icon, background. So we're going to start with our column one. So click the gradient tab and then click this plus button. So my first color here, I'm going to paste it between uh, here in this area. And then for my second color, it's going to be an RGBA value. So I'm going to click here, drag the slider down a little bit so I can get the RGBA values. And then I'm going to paste my values between the brackets just like that. Next, we're going to go to the gradient type and set it to radial because by default, it's set to linear. Next, I'm going to set my column one start and end position. And it's going to be both 38. Next, I'm going to make this row full width. So I'm going to click here on design, sizing, activate, make this for, um, row full width. And then I'm also going to go to spacing. Now here we need to add a top margin and bottom margin of zero pixels. So I'm going to add it here, activate my chain. So the reason why I'm activating this chain is so that my value is added both to the top and the bottom. All right. So next we're going to go to column one, top padding and bottom padding. And again, this is going to be set to 20 to both sides. And then we're going to move over to column three padding. Again, it's going to be the same value of 20. And then finally, we're going to come over here to column 5 padding and set this to 20 as well. So here on the spacing, again, we need just to make sure that the uh, custom margin here is left alone. It's the custom padding that we need to add zeros to. Okay, so I'm going to activate my chain here again. And now we have padding both to the top and the bottom. So with that set, I'm going to save this. And then we're going to duplicate these rows just to save us time when it comes to designing the next rows. So I'm going to do this twice like that. Right. So the next stage we're going to do here is to remove the column gradients. So I'm going to come over here, click this gear icon, background, go to the gradients. In fact, it's right here, column one gradient. I'm just going to remove that. Next, we're going to remove the column spacing. So I'm going to click here on design, spacing. And for column three padding, we're going to, we're going to get this, get rid of this and set it to zero. And notice that this has now been updated as well because my chain is activated. We're going to move over here to column three padding, do the same thing, set this to zero. And then we're also going to go to column five padding and also set it to zero. And then we're going to save. So the next stage now is to add a blurb module here on our first row, column one. I'm going to click this plus button, select my blurb module. So we just want to get rid of some of this text here because it's a bit too much. And then we're just going to call this step one. And then we're also going to choose an icon. So I'm going to come over here to image and icon. By default, it comes with an image. So I'm just going to click here on this use icon um, 
option. And then I'm going to choose the icon that I'm going to use. I'm just going to scroll down here and select this one here. Next, I'm going to add a background color to the blurb module. So I'm going to click here on background, click this plus button and add my color in here, just like that. Next, let's make this more exciting by adding a hover background color. So I'm going to click here on this arrow. And now we have these two tabs. I'm going to click here on the hover tab and I'm going to add my color. But this time my color is going to be an RGBA value. So I'm going to drag this slider down and paste my values between the brackets. Now, again, I know I've mentioned this before, but if you want to use the same colors as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the description below. Now let's customize our icon. So I'm going to come over here to design image and icon, and we're going to start off by setting our icon color. So I'm going to click here on this eyedropper tool, paste my color in here, just like that. Next, we're going to come over here to icon placement, make sure it's set to top, use icon font size, we're going to say yes. And then we're going to set the size to 80 pixels. So I'm just going to type it in here. Now we're also going to add a hover state for our icon color. So I'm going to click here on this arrow, click on the hover color, and I'm going to set this to white. So if I flip between these two, you can actually see the hover action working. Great. Okay, so moving on, icon size, we're also going to set this to 120. And this is going to also going to be on the hover state. So here, I'm going to click on this arrow. Again, be sure to just mouse over this area here where, where, where the description is to get that option. So I'm going to click here on hover and I'm going to set this to 120. Now it's time to go to the text settings. So I'm going to click here on text. The orientation needs to be centered and the text color needs to be set to light so that we can read on this dark background. So you can see here that that is much better now. Now let's go to the title, the title of this blurb. So I'm going to click here and uh, we're going to uh, set this to ultra bold and uppercase. So I'm going to click here on um, regular, set it to ultra bold, all uppercase. And then we're going to go to transitions. I'm going to click here on advanced transitions. We're going to set this to 500. So for now, we're going to go ahead and save. And then what we need to do is to clone these and add them to the even spaces here. So I'm going to use a shortcut and this is command C to copy and command V to paste. Now, if you're on a PC, it's control C and control V to paste. Okay, so I've already done that. And now I'm just going to paste. And as you can see, this is quick. What you could also do is to use, click on this duplicate button here. And then after you've duplicated the two, just drag them into position. Okay, so next we need to uh, copy this and continue pasting it on the third row. Okay, so we're going to come over here and paste it in these columns. So what we're going to do now is to change the contents of uh, these blurbs. So for example, here we've got step one, step two. So this needs to be adjusted to the proper numbers. So it's going to be step one, step two, step three, and then four, five, and six. So go ahead and do that. Right. So what we're also going to do here is to change these arrows to start pointing in this direction so that um, it just shows the progress. So step one, step two, step three, step four, and so on. So let's go into this blurb and change the icon. So I'm going to come over here to image and icon. And this time we're going to choose this one here to show the right direction. In fact, uh, it's this one that I need. Save that. Do the same here. Right. So moving on, the next thing we're going to do is to add a divider to the second column of row one. So I'm going to click this plus button here, search for my divider module. I'm going to select it. We're going to click on make sure show divider is set to yes. Next, let's uh, let's add a divider color. So I'm going to click here on design color. And then I'm going to paste my color in here. We're going to come over here to spacing. And we are going to add a margin of 150 to the top. And on the left margin, we're going to set it to minus 60 and minus 60 to the right as well. Now, as we did before, I'm just going to save this for now. We're going to clone this as well. So I'm just going to hit Command C, paste it over here and on the bottom here as well. So these are the lines that are connecting all our steps. So we are also going to need some vertical dividers. So we are going to add 
a divider module to column one of the second row. So we're going to come over here. Now, at the moment, I don't have access to add my module. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click here on expand settings, click on wireframe mode, and then I'm going to click my plus button here to add my divider. I'm going to select it. And then I'm going to switch back over here to the desktop view. Right, so this time we are not going to show the divider. So I'm going to set this to no. We're going to add a background color to this module. So I'm going to click this plus button here, paste my color. Now let's go to sizing. So I'm going to click here on design, sizing. And we are going to set the width here to 0.5%. So now we can see we have this little line here. Next, we need to align this to the center like that. So now it completes all the steps. The next stage now is to come over here to spacing and we are going to add a top margin of 20 and top padding of 120 and a bottom padding of 120. Like that. Okay. So now we have beautiful spacing between step one and step six. Now it's time to save and then we're going to clone this one more time. Right, so the next stage now is to come over here to column three of the second row and add a text module. So I'm going to select, I'm going to search for it and select it. And then we're just going to add text that says approach and set it to heading two. Okay, so now that we have our text in heading two, the next stage now is to go to our heading text settings. So I'm going to click here on this brush tool. And then now we are on the specific text settings. Right, so let's start off with our font weight of ultra bold. Alignment needs to be centered. Now let's add our color. So I'm going to click here on this eyedropper tool. Now my color here is going to be an RGBA value. So I'm going to drag this slider down and paste my value between the brackets, just like that. And again, these values are in the post which i'll link to in the show notes below right so with that now let's go ahead now and add our text size so for the desktop we're going to set this to 220 so i'm just going to scroll down here and then drag this until i get to in fact i'm just going to i just need to type it in 220 like that so it's nice and big now for the tablet we're going to set it to 150 so let's go ahead and do that so i'm going to click this little icon here which is a mobile phone so on the tablet, we're going to set this to 150. And for the phone, we're going to set this to 100. Now let's set our letter spacing. So I'm going to go back over here to the desktop tab. And then for the letter spacing, we're going to set this to minus 50. And then we're going to go in and set our tablet. And this time it's going to be minus 30. And for the phone, it's going to be minus 25. Next, we need to go come over here to spacing. And we're going to add some margins. So I'm going to start off with our top margin of 30, left margin of minus 800, and our right margin of minus 800 as well. So because it's the same value, I'm just going to activate my chain. And now we can see we have this beautiful style here by just by adding our left margin and our right margin. Right, so as you can see, this section here is optimized for desktop. So what we need to do now is to create another section which is optimized for mobile devices. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to start off by creating a brand new section. So I'm going to click this plus button here, click on regular. Now this time we are going to use one column. So I'm going to select it. I'm going to close this for now. And then I'm going to come over here and add a background color. So I'm going to click here on my section settings, click on background, and then I'm going to add my color. Next, I'm going to come over here to design spacing, and I'm going to add a custom padding of 170 both to the top and the bottom. And then I'm going to come over here to advanced. And then over here on visibility, I'm going to make sure that this is disabled on the desktop. Okay, so this is going only going to be visible on phone and tablet. But for now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say, uh, I'm just going to undo what I've just done so that I can see all my designs that I'm doing in the right without in the right mode without having that overlay. So I'm going to save this for now. So instead of redesigning this text, we are just going to copy it and just paste it in place. Save us, save us uh, doing all those settings. So I'm just going to go in here and make sure that this is all caps. So I'm going to click here on design, heading text, come over here to heading two and make it all caps. So the next thing we're going to do is to remove all the spacings. So I'm going to come over here to spacing and I'm going to get rid of my margins and 
over here on the left and the right as well. We're going to save this for now and then we're going to add another row. So I'm going to click this plus button here to add my row, single column, and then I'm just going to close this for now. Now the next stage here is to go back and choose a blob module, blurb module here. So I'm going to copy this one here and paste this in place just like that. We're going to change this icon now to face down. So I'm going to click here on this uh, gear icon, image and icon, and then we're going to make it face down because that's the direction that everything is going. Right. So what we're going to do next is to change the sizing. So I'm going to go over here to design sizing, and then we're going to come over here to the width. And then for the tablets, we're going to set this to 39%. And for the phone, we're going to set it to 59. And then for the module alignment, just let's just make sure that this is centered as well. Great. So we're going to come back over here to the desktop view and then save. Now, the next step is to get this vertical line here. So I'm going to copy it like, um, like what I did before. So right now, I don't have access to uh, this module here. So I'm going to go to my wireframe mode. And then I'm going to come over here to this divider and copy it. And then I'm going to scroll down here and paste it in place. And then go back to my visual mode. So now we can see that this line is now in place. So the next stage now is, as you can see, this is way too thick. So let's go ahead and fix that. So I'm going to come over here, click on this gear icon to go into the divider settings. Click on design spacing. And we're going to start by adding a padding of 50, both to the top and the bottom. So now you can see the height has been reduced. Right, so what we need to do now is to clone these as many times as we want, depending on the steps that we need, and just duplicate these as many times as I want. So what you also need to do is to come over here. So this is step one. So this needs to be set to set two, step two, step three, and so on, until you're happy with the steps that you need. So this one here is going to be the mobile, uh, the mobile version. So the final stage now is to go in and just make sure that you set it correctly. So I'm going to click here on section settings, advanced, and come over here to visibility, and then make sure that desktop here is disabled. And then this won't be shown when someone visits your website on a desktop. This was only visible to the phone and the tablet. Okay, so that's all you need to do. So let's publish this page and uh, let's do a quick review of what we've just done. Okay, so let's check if our animations are working. So if I mouse over here, you can see here that this animation is working, which is great. And then over here as well, if I mouse over here, you can see that the animations are working as well. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. And if you have a question regarding this tutorial, please leave your questions in the comments box below and I'll do my best to respond to them. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.